Hi, I'm Sari Sudhakaran. In this video, I'll show you the 10 step formula to finding the best camera angles. Your secret weapon. Something you can actually use in your film. Start by believing the camera can be used like a paintbrush. You can make it say the things you want to say and you can hide things you want to hide. Camera angles are just one way to do this. A very powerful way. By changing the camera angle or actor position, you can greatly influence the emotional response in the audience. Seriously, if you don't believe that, you'll always be afraid of the camera. I'm going to be referencing a couple of short films I've made. I'll put the links to the films in the description so you can check it out if you want. It doesn't matter what gear you have. One short film was made with cheap gear, the other with proper film crew and gear. The ideas are the same. If I can do it, you can too. Ready? Tip number one. The single most important question you can ask and you should ask is, whose point of view is the story from? Who are we identifying with during the scene? That person gets the most shots. Why? When two people are talking in a dialogue scene, you think they're equal, but not necessarily. The situation or scene might dictate one character is more important than the other. When that happens, you might want to show the reaction shot of the more important character more often. When you do this, the audience identifies with their feelings more. If you want to keep it equal, both characters can have the same number of shots. When you have a back and forth banter between two actors and they're on equal footing in the scene, there's no reason to give one actor more shots than the other. Tip number two, ask how many people should be in the shot. In a dialogue scene, do you want to show just the person speaking or the person he or she is talking to? The presence of the second person in the shot makes a huge difference. By showing them, the audience is consciously or subconsciously looking for their reaction to what is being said. You want to feel what they feel about what is being said. This is most powerfully used in the over the shoulder shot. Even the presence of the shoulder makes a difference. This is why the over the shoulder shot is used as a confrontational device instead of two solo shots, for example. The dialogue becomes confrontational when a bit of the other person is in the frame, even if that shoulder is not moving. Its mere presence is enough. Tip number three, what is the right shot size? How big should a person be in the frame? I don't think there's a better answer than Alfred Hitchcock's advice here. The most important thing should be the biggest. That's why close-ups are so powerful. If you only want to see the emotional response of the actor on screen, then there's no better shot than a close-up. However, if you want the body language of the actor to be visible, then obviously you need a medium or a long shot. Traditional filmmakers avoided close-ups a lot and only used them as punctuation for the really important moments. In today's age though, as screens are smaller, there are a lot more close-ups because you can't see the emotions correctly in long shots on a mobile phone. Tip number four, the vertical angle of the camera makes a person look more important or less important. This has been shown countless times in movies. A low angle is used to make somebody look more menacing or larger. A higher angle makes them look weaker or smaller. Sometimes it's overused to the point of parody and the effect becomes tacky and distracting. What if you want to break this rule? You can. Study Orson Welles and this famous scene from Citizen Kane where he used extreme low angles to make the larger than life characters look weaker and sympathetic. The intent is everything. Tip number five, follow the eye or the point of focus. This is one powerful technique to get the audience to keep watching your film. Let's say in one shot the focus point is here. Then in the next shot you maintain the same focus point. The audience will not have to move their eyes from one shot to the next. There is a continuous flow to the action. However, you can also break the rule and force the audience to jump around on screen, creating tension and confusion. Imagine a barrage of shots in an action scene. Are they forcing your eye to stay consistent so it becomes easier to follow the action? Or are the shots all over the place and it takes longer for your eye to travel from one point to the next? If the shot lengths are the same, the second will perceptively appear faster and more incoherent and the first will appear smooth. Both methods can be used as long as you know what effect you're going for. Tip number six. This will probably be the most important tip and it comes from director Emir Kustaritsa. Every time you look through the viewfinder of the camera at the shot, your heart should race faster. You should get excited and you should feel something. If you don't, then there's something missing and you should take a small break to figure out what it is. If you can't figure it out or you're having trouble, you're afraid of boring your audience, 
then you'll love the seventh tip to help you get over the block. Tip number seven. Every shot should provide new information or advance the story. As long as you do this ruthlessly, the audience will stay glued to your film. When you compare boring movies with good movies, you'll find this is the most important distinction. I'd even go so far as to say it doesn't really matter what you show as long as it is new information. And there's a thread from one shot to the next. If there is, the audience will follow it. Sometimes the thread isn't there, or the audience is expected to provide the thread themselves through intellectual discourse in their mind, as in the case of the Soviet cinema of Eisenstein. Tip number eight, follow the 180 degree rule. I've made two videos on the 180 degree rule. The first is how to use it, and the second is how to break it. So I won't go into the details here. However, using the 180 degree rule or breaking it is a powerful way to tell a story. And we're literally talking camera angles here. You can either maintain the rule for a smoother flow or purposely break it to create tension and excitement. But don't be too stressed about following it religiously. If the performances are good, the audience won't care even if you make a mistake. Here in this scene, I've purposely broken the 180 degree rule. How many noticed? None as far as I can tell. Tip number nine. What is the physical relationship between the characters? Wide angle lenses make things look bigger and more menacing. Telephoto lenses compress space and make everything look closer with equal magnitude. The former is used a lot in say Jurassic Park for example to make the dinosaurs more menacing and larger while the actors look smaller even if they're just a few feet away. If you want the characters to be closer, get them closer. If they're emotionally far apart, get them further away using lenses and positioning. You'll find tons of camera angle analysis videos on wolfcrow.com if you want examples of how this is done. And finally, tip number 10. Where should the actor look? The person who looks closer to the camera is more powerful. That's because we feel they're looking more towards us. The character that looks away seems distant and out of reach. If you want your actor to hit the sweet spot, make them look as close to the lens as possible, but just off it. However, this technique should be used with care. If everyone looks just off camera, then no one will have an advantage over the other, and the effect will not be as powerful. This is the problem with following rules for no reason and no understanding. When you have everyone looking normally, and then suddenly this one guy gives one great speech looking just off camera, the impact is stunning. That's how you get it done. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.